My name is Wan Ng and I'm an academic working in the area of science and technology education at the University of Technology, Sydney in Australia. In this video, I'll be talking about teaching science and technology in primary classrooms. Primary teachers are somewhat unclear of what constitute constructs of uh, science and technology and how they are related. So in technology, working technologically is about designing, building, uh, evaluating and matching materials to a purpose. It is about practical problem solving and uh, it embraces students' ability to cre think creatively. Science is about studying the natural and uh, physical environment and working scientifically involves processes of observations, questioning, hypothesizing, designing experiments and conducting the experiments, interpreting and analyzing the data and reasoning and arguing with valid uh, evidence. So one of the ways to understand the relationship between technology and science, uh, particularly in terms of processes, is to relate inquiry to science as the need to know and to relate design to technology as the need to do. And the information obtained as a result of the science investigations will then inform the design and the construction of the product that the students are intended to, to make. So as, an, as another example, you know, in building a worm farm, uh, what students will need to know is they will need to investigate and find out about the structure and the life cycle of worms and the conditions of uh, living for, uh, for the worms. In technology, they will uh, explore the type of materials to use, the shape of the worm farm, and then they have to consider factors such as uh, drainage because uh, worms do not like to live in uh, conditions that are too wet. I mean, they could they could drown in it and uh, they need to think about ventilation because worm farm designed by year six and seven students during woodwork class. The container is a plastic cube with openings as handles on uh, the four sides of the cube which also serves our as for air. The openings are covered by netting to stop the worms from escaping. The students build a wooden compartment that can be lifted out of the plastic container for cleaning as well as to drain excess liquid. The base of the wooden compartment has holes and is lifted off the base of a container by wooden support for drainage purposes as worms do not like soil that is too waterlogged. The students have placed clear plastic sheets on the back and front side of the wooden compartment that will allow them to see the activity of the worms inside the worm farm as they lift the whole compartment up. Simpler design of a mini worm farm for the junior primary students could be made out of a plastic bottle with the top cut off and holes poked through the sides and bottom of the bottle to drain excess liquid as well as to provide uh, for ventilation. And the layers of sand as shown in this slide also help to stop the soil from uh, becoming too wet. The integrated approach where students are engaged in solving a problem is a good way for them to, to study science and technology um, concepts and skills. The design will raise the questions for science to investigate and the science will provide the information uh, for the products uh, to be designed and made. The implications for teachers uh, in order to help students undertake science inquiry investigations and design uh, creatively are that they need to understand the relationship between science and technology and they need to be sufficiently knowledgeable in um, the content of uh, both areas and they need to understand how, how primary students learn science and technology and some of the more common misconceptions that they hold and they also need to be able to implement strategies that will help students learn specific concepts and skills in science and technology.